Welcome to Oiler Wrap-Up, talking with Oiler head coach Charlie Ernst as the Oilers fall tonight at Trevec in a, in a battle. 96-90, the final scores. Coach, let's start at the top. Down a man without Nate Bruns, and understandably, it, it, it looked like you guys were a little out of sorts early. We were. I mean, uh, you know, we practiced. Nate tweaked it a little bit, his hamstring at Grand Valley, but he came back from the break and felt a lot better. So he practiced for a day, and then the the middle day, which would have been Sunday, uh, he felt a little twinge in there, didn't feel great. So we didn't have him practice yesterday and made a decision today to hold him out. So the point is we haven't had a whole lot of time to go without him. And uh, But, you know, I think our guys were, you know, they were ready to, to kind of go next man up mentality. And I thought um, – you know, it, yeah, it, it did affect our rotation a little bit, but I don't think that was – it would have been nice to have Nate. He had been a tough matchup and would have given us an inside presence. As it was, we relied on jump shots almost predominantly on offense, and you know, we got a lot of good looks in the first half, but we didn't make many, and it's a tough way to make a living on the road. And so um proud of our guys fighting the second half. Um, you know, we're kind of a road weary team right now. Um, you know, and I, I hope that good fortune's, you know, around the corner. Well, you just kind of unpacked my four of my points and let's kind of break those down a little bit. First off, you got to give credit to Rebecca. They came out aggressive on both ends of the floor. They shot the ball very well at the beginning and, uh, created that lead and then able to hold you guys off. Well, you know, it's interesting. A year ago, they brought in the new women's coach, and their women's program went from a cellar dweller to, you know, a uh, conference contender in one year's time, you know, thanks to the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, their men's team seems to be following uh, kind of closely behind their, their head coach, Mark Carroll. I've known Mark. He's been an assistant, was a D2 head coach for a while, uh, was an assistant recently, I think, at Lipscomb. Uh, right here in Nashville, but he's doing a really nice job. He brought in a couple uh, impact transfers. He's meshed them with a few holdovers. And, you know, they're they're running the new system. They're playing with a lot of confidence, um, you know, and, and of course, uh, this is their last year in the conference, so I think that's kind of giving them a little extra juice on top of that. So, you know, they're a good team, a good team that executes their offense well, and uh, we had our hands full all night. In the preview uh, with Jeremiah, you talked about rebounding was a big problem again. Out round, out rebounded in the first half alone, twenty six fourteen, and including seven huge offensive rebounds for them. Yeah, it's really frustrating uh, to say the least, Tim. Uh, you know, I think that's probably, to be honest, more than more than offense, where we miss Nate the most is on the glass and. Uh, you know, we're just just not getting enough rebounding from our front line. Um, you know, tonight we tried to mix in our zone since we were a man down, and just to defend their Princeton offense, we felt like, and to be honest, it worked wonderfully at times. The problem was is the amount of second chance opportunities they got. Um, you know, it's not a zone, especially the way we play it, that's conducive to rebounding. But it is conducive to playing a small lineup, which we had to do at times tonight. So, you know, you, you kind of hope you play some give and take, and uh, it, it's it's a major concern for us at this point. I mean, um, and we're going on Thursday on to Kentucky Westland, and, you know, they're a very good rebounding team. So it's not going to get any easier. Uh, we got to be more physical on the glass. Our guards have to do a better job of, of – you know, helping our bigs out. Listen, rebounding is a five-person job. It, it, a lot of times people assume, well, the six, eight guys should be the ones getting all the rebounds, you know, and that's not always the case. And, you know, I, hey, at the very least, when you shoot 44 threes, you need to get more than five offensive rebounds. In the preview, Coach, and then just again a little bit ago, you talked about maybe being a little road weary. Do you feel like, uh, that was a bit of a factor tonight? Well, I'd like to think it wasn't because I feel like our team's got good good body language energy right now. I think, uh, 
you know, really, we we have good energy overall. And but I did notice our guys fatiguing out quicker tonight than they have in the past. And uh, I mean, how could they not be road weary? We, you know, Question. this this schedule, this schedule. I'm a little disappointed. It it it. This was a mistake in the conference. It should have never happened. Um, you know, I'm not going to make excuses, but this was not the schedule that we were supposed to play. Um, you know, to be honest, we, after the Grand Valley game, we were supposed to have a non-conference game last night, and then we were supposed to go on the road and play these games Thursday, Saturday. But as it was, we had to bring our guys back early from Thanksgiving, so they didn't get a long break after the Grand Valley game. We had to kind of get ourselves ready because we had to leave Monday morning or bright and early. You know, they've got the week before finals going on, which is, you know, as a college student, it's sometimes a more important week to be in class than even. Uh, so it's not just the road weary. It's that their minds are in a lot of places right now. And, uh, you know, it's it's what you deal with. But, but certainly being on the road uh, the entire week, We'll, we'll return to Finley on Friday. Uh, the week before finals is certainly not ideal, and especially for a team that will have played five of our six games away from home, and with all five being a long way from home. Yeah. You had a stretch there, and you kind of referenced a little bit ago, that turned into a bit of a three-point shootout between the two teams. How comfortable were you with that? <laughs> If you'd asked me that three weeks ago, I'd have probably said not very comfortable. But as the season has kind of played out, I've sort of come to the conclusion that for some of our guys, that's kind of who we are. Um, So, you know, the amount of threes isn't my concern. It's two other things that concern me more than the number of threes. It's the, the quality of all of them, number one, and it's the lack of offensive rebounds on the misses, number two. So those are my two bigger concerns rather than just the fact that we attempted 44 of them. 58 bench points of uh, your team tonight certainly points to the depth of this roster. It's been a strength of ours all year, you know, and uh, I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's – we we know we can pack some scoring off the bench. Um, we know that. But it would really be a weapon if our starting group was, you know, was always executing at an extremely high level. And then we bring another wave in and execute just as well with our bench. But, you know, we're we're still a little bit inconsistent there. But certainly, how can you complain? 58 points off the bench is a heck of a night. What's the big takeaway from this game, Coach? Well, I I think probably – I think for us it's got to be really cleaning up our consistency on offense. I mean, when you shoot that many threes, you you, you know, it's – I've always said this. To pick up momentum in basketball, you know, you have to get stops. But I I feel like we not only – struggle on offense at times but we don't get good shots and the shots we take have long rebounds and then it's like quick transition the other way and that's when we're at our worst so even when we don't score on offense because you're not going to score all the time in fact your offensive efficiency doesn't need to be high but your you know your execution level can still be high you can still reverse the ball three times you can get moving on offense and then even if you don't score, it's really hard for the offense to get transition on you. So we, we've just got to be more consistent, I feel like, on offense. Um, I think it'll help our defense. You know, I think that's the number one takeaway. And number two, we just got to get tougher on the glass. There is, there is no other way to put it. We have got to get more physical, and we've got to play with an attitude on the boards. Those are the two most important negative takeaways. The positive, I've seen it all year by this group. We, we have a lot of fight. We're not going to give up. We're going to play to the buzzer. Uh, we've done it all year long. And, uh, you know, this locker room is still tight. These guys, uh, you know, I don't see any cracks right now. I think this team's together. 
And so for that reason, I'm still very positive about what this team can accomplish. Well, as you said, Coach, it's a short turnaround for you guys before facing a, a KWC team that, that looks like it's made some uh, real strides forward. Yeah, you know, they've got a lot of new guys. Uh, you know, they've got some good, you know, obviously, a few good holdovers, but they've also got a lot of new guys. I think they're, a, a, you know, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't watched a lot of tape. I tried to focus on Treveca, but from what my staff has told me, they're, they're bigger and more athletic, but probably not as quick and not as explosive on offense. So a little different animal, um, you know, but, but another big challenge. We know how tough it is to go down uh, over to the sports center and beat them on their home floor, so it'll be a big challenge. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time, and we'll talk with you again on Thursday. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right. This has been Euler Wrap-Up on Euler Athletics.